Hello and welcome. I'm going to be going over eight problems from the Get Strong and Invading book, all centered around this formation that you're seeing before you. Um, before we start, I wanted to do sort of an intro to what I'm doing here and what I'm hoping to achieve with this series of videos, um, not just for this book specifically, but if I decide to do a couple more books in a similar fashion, um, my, re my reasons behind it and hopefully, um, hopefully it, this also helps you with your uh, studying here. And I, I was looking through the problems because I wanted to find a, the epitome of why these books are so tough for me to follow. And I'm looking here at problem 36, which is not what I'll be covering here. It'll be in a couple of videos following this one. But uh, just reading why a, a certain move is not correct. Um, and I'll just read it word for word from the book. It says, White's failure, preventing black from linking up with two fails. Black plays three and five, and the white stones on both sides come under siege. If white two at three, black three at A, white four at two, black five. And it's, it's that sort of <laughs> jumping around and trying to get all of, all of the information on one single diagram and substituting letters and just writing about what's going to happen, I, I think is um, a failure of these books. Um, I've only seen one other book series to do what I'm looking for and what I'm going to be doing in this sort of video, and that's one move at a time. Now, the, the book series is Go By Example by Neil Moffmat. You can um, go to Amazon and get the uh, improving single-digit Q play and correcting common mistakes and double-digit Q play for like 10 bucks a piece. But what I really liked about this book is that there was no letters for the most part. There was no numbers. It was each diagram just showed the next move. And then there would be a dot in the middle saying, hey, this is the new stone. And as you're progressing through the books, you can just look at it diagram by diagram and watch the flow of stones. Uh, and I really, I really liked that. It was easy to follow. It was like reading any old book um, as far as sentence by sentence, word by word type of thing. Um, not so much with all the other books I've been encountering. So, anyways, hopefully this series translates uh, this Get Strong and Invading book to be a similar format as the Go By Example books that I like so much. And uh, here we go. So this is the first problem in the book. White has this three space extension here. Um, most likely what happens is he approached low here, Black backed off. He then made a three-space extension. Black um, approached from this side. And then white tanuki. Um, not really specifying what the correct move is. But anyways, um, white has a three-space extension here. So the first problem in the book is, what does black do? Um, and since this is a get strong and invading book, the answer is an invasion. So which invasion do you think black should do? I'll give you a, a few seconds to pause the video and think about it. Okay, so black, the correct answer from the book is black invades here. Just split it right down the middle. Um, and then a continuation from the book on this very problem is white now diagonals here, black can come out, white hanes, and then black attaches on top. And that is the end of the first question. So then the second question is, well, what if white doesn't do this diagonal? What if white jumps out? Now what should black do? And the problem, uh, like, well, I, I will give you a few more seconds to think about this answer. All right, so the answer is black jumps out here. And now white is split into two, and this will turn into a running fight, and that's where this one ends. Now, a variation of this is what if white jumps over here? Black now plays this diagonal and attacks this stone. Okay, so going back, we've seen this jump, we've seen this diagonal, we've seen this jump. Now what about this diagonal? This is problem number seven. What does black do? And the response from the book is black should defend the corner. White still has to deal with this stone. It's, it's not dead yet. Um, 
and preventing him from going in the corner makes white have to deal with the stone. So white now continues by covering this stone. And now black still has A later on to continue the annoyance of white and activating the IG of this stone. Okay, so what if white doesn't do any of those attacks on this stone? What if white instead jumps in the corner? This is problem 10. How does black respond? So this is a pretty common 3-3 invasion here when black has a stone here. Uh, the correct answer is to defend from this side. And then black will honey, or sorry, white will honey here. Uh, black counter honeys, white fixes, black connects, and white makes a live group in the corner. Now white's two stones on top here are outnumbered, and black should easily make some profit here. A variation of this, if black instead thinks this right side is more important, instead of honeying here, black can actually turn, and then white will take this point. Black will Atari, and then white connects. And now this reinforces this side, if that's important to him. And then from there, black can now switch to attacking this stone here. I did not include that in the original one, but anyways. Alright, so white doesn't want to go invade the corner. Instead, white says, hey, I'm going to attach underneath. This is problem 13. What should black do? There are actually two correct answers here, and they're each one of these honeys, depending on what black wants and how he wants to finish it. But black can also tanuki this. Now if white comes and attaches with this, black can have a few more forcing moves with this, and then he can even hane here, and take sente again. So black does not necessarily need to respond when white attaches underneath. If something else is more important, feel free to do that. There's still a lot of Audrey in this stone that white has to deal with. Alright, but uh, let's say black does the normal initial response, and white cuts black Ataris. Now normally what happens is white Ataris on top, black connects, and then white connects, but for problem 16, white instead Ataris on this side. So again, instead of A, white Ataris, and with this, he's invade or he's um, aiming to invade here in the corner. And so the question for black or for problem 16 is now how should black answer? The correct answer in the book says black should defend the corner with one. And so white is now going to cut here. Black will capture. White Atari's on top. Black connects. White takes Ko. And black connects again. And according to the book, black has no reason to be dissatisfied. White now can take this and live, live here. And black has protected this upper side here and gotten fourth line territory in the corner. Variation... The standard variation here is for white to do this, black to connect, white to connect, black to connect, white now to Atari, and at this point, black comes back and defends. Now white needs to think about completing a shape with A, otherwise this is a, a peep at this. Black might even be able to cut directly. Alrighty then, let's say black now, instead of hunting from this side, black honeyed from this side. The standard sequence is this one. And now that we're here, problem 19 is what should black do now? The correct answer is this one. And it's a good move. White can still live in the corner here. Um, so white's going to descend here to put this on Atari, black will capture, and then white will attach here, black fixes, white extends, black connects, and now white must think about fixing up his shape with a move like A, and black 
B is still Sente against the corner. Um, if white doesn't respond, black can actually kill the corner. And black is overall satisfied with this result. Now, a variation is if white, instead of attaching here, tries to kill this group and descend here. Black will fix, white will come around here, but white does not have enough liberties to kill this group. White needs two more moves, and he's a liberty behind. So white will attar here to force black to connect. Now, a, a move at white A or B, though sente against this stuff, might affect um, this upper left side here. So black needs to be aware of that. All right, so one more problem. Problem number 22. Going back to the beginning here. Instead of white attaching underneath, white attaches here. And so, the answer, or the question is now, what does white, what does black do about this attachment? The correct answer is uh, just a simple honey here. Now, white will probably come here, and black can just fix. Now, if white doesn't respond, black at A here uh, puts us in Atari, and it can lead to a pretty big fight. Later on, if white wants to start a co, white can do that by honeying here. And uh, black doesn't have to fight it, of course, but um, if he doesn't respond, then white's going to get some good eye shape. So, uh, In order to go to co, black will cut here, white will block here, and then the co starts with this. So that is the eight problems from the Get Strong Invading, all centered around this three-space extension and black invading at this point. Uh, like I said, I will be going through the rest of the problems in the book uh, based on each invasion like this. But kind of as a trial run, let me let me know what you guys thought of this this start of the series. Um, was this helpful to you? Do you see some benefit of me doing more than just uh, this one? Um, I, I like I said, I will be doing the rest of them for myself because I learn best uh, seeing the stones flow like this. But uh, let, let me know how it goes, and uh, thank you for watching.